Okay, your synthetic works great when you get a flat tappet motor. Yeah. When well, you got rocker arms and camshafts, touch going metal to metal. Okay. You've got to have high zinc content. Yeah. Most of the synthetic oils don't have it. The, um, Mobile One just re-released their race oil a couple weeks ago with high, with high zinc in it. Yeah, that's all mix too. Well, <laughs> what's the gimmick about putting zinc in the real oil versus synthetic? Synthetics raise the temperature where things fail. Well, here's what also don't stick to the metal of the shit. Well, here's I, what I do like synthetics. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Not for old stuff. Well, here's new stuff. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what I've learned. I've learned that the, they say that the, the, the zincs are supported and carried in the ester based synthetics with a, they call it a P a POA uh, additive that actually helps that zinc stick in the, in the synthetics a lot better and. Uh, the, the other issue you have with older motors is the tolerances of bearing caps and seals. Yeah. It's not nearly what you need for synthetics. Synthetics have a consistency of water, basically. Now, the new mobile one that they just introduced is very thick, and it's designed for the older motors. Well, it just and I'm not saying, look, I'm not an authority on this. Yeah. I just know that we had a shitload of failures of these cars with mm -hmm. the nose, when the oil went to no zinc, right. which was a smog requirement for the oil companies. Uh -huh. That's why you had guys like Kendall GT1 that made high zinc oil. That they had to quit putting the additives in it. And so then Brad Penn goes and buys the old factory where the Kendall GT1 was made, puts green dye back in the oil, makes green Kendall GT1 basically. Mm -hmm. Original Kendall ended up having more zinc in it than the new Brad Penn oil. Mm -hmm. Joe Gibbs comes out with oil with high zinc. Roush comes out with oil with high zinc. I called the guys that are the biggest engine builders in the country and they're all running the Joe Gibbs. Now just Mobile One has just come out come out with a new product. It's in fact it's in that magazine right there. Yeah, we we uh, we tested with that stuff a little bit. It's the new thick stuff, and it sticks to the metal. Mm -hmm. Might be fine, but older motors don't like synthetics as much as the newer stuff. Talking about the Torco, Torco SR1, Torco Amsoil. I keep hearing good shit about a lot of those products. It's just not good for old motors where the seals won't seal the stuff in the motor. Well, the, right. I mean, it, stuff is going to leak out. It leaks out like water. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. It's going to be. I'm with you. No, you know who's going to be here in a minute? Frank Consowitz from Ed Pink. Talk to him. He's the one that actually sold us some Joe Gibbs the last time we needed it. If Ed Pink Racing Engines is running, and I think he'll probably tell you he runs some synthetics in more modern engines when they're designed to seal. Well, but older mean, stuff like this, that you know, the, the old joke, these things just leak like a sieve. I mean, they're pretty, these are. I also worry about the oil in the engine. No, no, no. Some, a lot of the a lot of Torco stuff. Apparently, they have the uh, additives to keep it so it's not eroding the earlier seals as well. Well, it's not an issue of eroding the seals. It's an issue that the tolerances of the metal and the yeah. oil pan gas. Okay. I couldn't put this oil pan on with Honda Bond like they do to modern motors where there's no gas. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, it's not like a billet finished oil pan right. against a billet finished block. It's, it's, like, it's, it's not flat. It's yeah. unfinished yeah. cast right. right? Yeah, you, you can stick a feeler gauge through right. half time yeah. with a gasket yeah. on yeah. it. It's a light through there. Yeah, exactly. And the bottom line is I don't dislike synthetics. I dislike synthetics for what we're doing. They don't work good in this situation. Yeah. They will, if the engine starts to fail or you get a, it gets hot and it raises the temperature, the bearings won't fail to 300 degrees instead of 260. That's all great, but I mean, if we're doing that, we still, we're still doing something wrong. Right. It's not an issue with the oil. I think, the, yeah, I think it's it's not so much raising the, the temperature threshold. I think it's more or less adding those friction modifiers right. but that won't, won't but, let you get up okay, there. Okay, the weird thing about the synthetics is is that the consistency of water, they don't uh, stick to the I mean, metal. consistency, I mean, at, at, at some point. I mean, like, pour it's synthetic still, out. It's yeah, thin like water. Pour this oil yeah, out. But it's all, like oils are, oil, all oils are measured at... Uh, They're viscosity. Yeah, viscosity. Right, but when you were kid in school, didn't they tell you in science class you can't change the viscosity of oils? Yeah. I don't How, know. They can't what, okay, well, in science class, I remember them saying viscosity is something that you can't change. I've often asked people, how do you get multi-viscosity oils if viscosity doesn't change? And what it is, is the tolerance, the way the oil breaks down during its, the different heats. Yeah, it's it, the way it it yeah, it's yeah. The way I mean, it everything pays. flows differently with temperature. But the, the thing is, is that with what we do with older motors, all the synthetics for a while didn't have any zinc in them. And the, the motors were failing left and right. We had guys running Royal Purple, which I've never heard anything good about. Yeah, you know. yeah, that's all. Torco, I've heard good stuff. I've heard good stuff about Amsoil. And when we call Rebello engines about like this red car, red lines, yeah, take it or leave it. But again, pour some red line out on the thing. It's as thin as water. I just and I don't know if it has any zinc in it. And I don't know if it has. I hear both sides of fence all the time. Synthetic people love, and the zinc content. No, in my Armada, where I got it, where it seals, I don't. Yeah, I could run synthetic if I yeah. liked it. Do you but run synthetic I don't. In that? No. 
I don't. He doesn't even run oil in the Armada. No, it doesn't need it. It creates its own oil. Yeah. I, I, you got to remember, that's the difference. I'm a dinosaur. I run dinosaur oil in our cars because that's what we do. It, it's. Yeah. I, I just I don't see a reason to put it in what we do. That's right. This is but you're going to We're going to bring in. Well, no, it'd be fun if Hansowitz gets here in a minute. We talked to him. About but what it. I really did learn also it was that uh, that a lot of synthetics. The best part of a synthetic oil is how much and you know that POA. And I forgot what he said, but that that what it that that's, it feeds back to it is dinosaur oil because they they consider synthetic they they take a plastic and and I guess melt it down and change the molecular structure. Put it in synthetic oil so it can support the ester-based oil. Right, and the oil base that might have been plastic, paraffin or but, yeah, but plastic used to be. Yeah, it was. It was. It's part of. It's a. It's a product based. Right. So, so when you. Yeah. There's a lot. There's still a lot of crude in synthetic. No matter right. What people say. But again, I think both oils have their place. But in what we do, it's really not. I hear. I mean, I there's guess. guys that run synthetics, yeah. and there's guys that ran Mobile One, and then all of a sudden their motors were failing. They found they didn't put any zinc in it. Mobile One actually at one time five six years ago. The Formula One teams had to quit running it because it didn't have what they needed to race with the Mobile One. They were failing the engines too. I, mean, they can, I see they it, it more important during the break-in process. Yeah, and the other thing is, do we really get the same oil as these like NASCAR no, teams run? Not. Are we really getting the same Pennzoil recycled green oil that they want that they're running in that NASCAR car oh, off yeah. the shelf at Grady? No, no, definitely not. You know, but when we buy Brett, when we buy Joe Gibbs oil, we're probably getting the same oil he's running in the car, and the same with the Roush's oil and. They're all coming out with them. They're all coming yeah. back with the zinc. I mean, Pencil if you look right, right, right here, I mean, I'm pretty sure it was this magazine that came the other day. They got sales. They have the, they had a story right in here just the other day when I got this, and they said that that Mobile One had finally had to realize that they, car, they were having a failure problem and that they had introduced a thick synthetic oil. So, so hell when you is, say thick and thin, that has nothing to do with the viscosity. It has to do with them leaking out of the, leaking out of the car. <laughs> All right, listen, I'm sorry I started this. No, it's a good discussion. Why? There's no wrong answer here. There's no right answer and there's no wrong answer. All right. In what we do, yeah, we synthetics don't, don't do a lot. Well, again, it's, it's an issue of if we had the modern cars that were put together with Honda Bond and you could keep them from leaking, synthetics are probably fine. I, what I've never liked about it is that if you look at synthetic oil on a piece of metal, it beads up like it's been waxed. You yeah. look at motor oil on a piece of metal, it is coating the metal. You look at a lot of synthetics, they're just beating uh, up on it like it's a... Here's why I'm going to bring this in, because I found this place, VF Sales. They got okay. hoses, they make hoses, they have fittings, they have uh, all kinds of case hardened ships so I can mount my seat. <laughs> uh, I'm right happy to go on a run, but okay. I, need, yep. I need to tell me what hose, what Well, we, Aaron and I just hoses. got the masters in when you wanted to stop here, so let's, let me just... I don't uh, want to stop. No, it's okay. No, it's cool. I, look, I love talking about it. And I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not even saying I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, 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 I know what I'm talking about when it comes yeah. to these older cars. 40 minutes later. By the way, everything I just said is bullshit. No, it's not right, bullshit. Well, it's just, it's, let it's, him it's, find it. There's me, something in there about me, the mobile Give me a, a list, because I'll go on a run. And we may have to go in there, and we may have to oh, just take right. these hoses, and we may have to figure out what we're oh, doing. Okay, well, when Tom well, it's coming, I don't want to just leave him hanging in. Tom yeah. I dropped a washer here. Yeah, we'll tell, we'll tell Aaron. He, we need to get this other master the rest of the way in it. We need to see what we need to do with uh, these two yeah. hoses real quick. There you go. He said, if you need any hoses, maybe he's got hydraulic print for everything. Yeah, we've got every size, and we do uh, XRP and all that. Oh, that's great. Except stuff. for you guys are proud it might be a little out of range, distance-wise. Mm -hmm. For us, it's a place like right up the, right up the street. That's a good neighborhood. Thanks. I can't find the washer. Um, I think